not like we've got a life or death situation where I'm choosing you between a chicken. We're choosing a chicken's life over a chicken sandwich. Firstly, where I am now, it's more like apathy. I don't know if you eat pigs. Yeah, I eat pigs. They're like little children in their minds, you know? Yeah. They scream, scream like terrified, terrified children. You're... I feel like I don't want to eat any more pigs, if I'm honest. Yeah, that was uh, very harrowing. All right, so we're back out here, Leicester Square in London. This is like my old stomping grounds. I've been here many times before. We're out the front of Burger King here. That Burger King went 100% vegan for a month, which was amazing, but it's back to killing a bunch of animals. So we're gonna to talk to people about this sign here. It says, if you're not vegan, you support animal abuse. Prove me wrong. Let's see if the public can uh, prove me wrong. There's a lot of people walking through. Now we wait. Just by having the sign out, people see the message anyway, so. You're up, mate. Come on. <laughs> you can prove me wrong. You don't need to. I wonder if any of my like proper trolls would ever sit down properly and I don't think so. Not like this. You wanna sit down, mate? Come on. Don't be shy. This is the position I'm arguing. If you're not vegan, you support animal abuse. It's cool. We can just have a chat. I'm polite. You can both come if you want. You can both come. What are you going to eat though? Steak. Yeah. You're going to go eat steak? <laughs> Chicken wings? Eat, eat, a, eat a dead animal? Okay. So they're actually going to go support some animal abuse right now into the steakhouse there. And then uh, they're going to come, they say. The type that would probably be really courageous in the comment section, but when it comes to sitting down, not so much. Well, look at all these people, wow. Like a lot of people do look at the sign and react. So he plants a seed this sign, like, there's our mates there in the steakhouse. What are you ordering, mate? You're having a salad? Oh, that's good. So, a vegan salad? Uh, well, I look forward to, if you want to come and have a chat, I look forward to it, because you, you seem pretty smart, actually, you do. I like the opposition. Why don't you have a think, right? Why don't you write some notes down? Bring the notes over. Okay, I've heard a lot of different arguments, actually, and we can talk about whether or not they justify what happens to animals, but yeah. They seem like good kids, interested. Anyone want to sit down? Do you want to sit down? Yeah. I didn't think I could prove you wrong. Oh, you want to talk about it anyway? Yeah, yeah okay. What's your name, mate? I'm Paddy. Here you go, Paddy, you can have this. Oh, thanks, man. I'd like to give my guest the, the mic now. Alright, what's your name? Joey. Joey. Good to meet you, mate. So, are you vegan? Uh, I am not, no. And what did you think about the sign when you first read it? Uh, remind me what the sign says. In it says, full. if you're not vegan, yeah. you support animal abuse. Right. Prove me wrong. Okay, uh, I don't think I can prove you wrong because I agree with the statement. Why? Why do you agree with it? If we take the thought process that all life should be valued the same, all sentient life, uh, and you imagine a cow or a pig or a chicken being uh, in the same thought as a person, well, it wouldn't be very nice if, you know, we chop people up and cook them and ate them, you know? Yeah. Is that, is that kind of like the, the idea behind... Yeah, it's about consistency. Yeah. It's not like we've got a life or death situation where I'm choosing you between a chicken. It's, we're choosing a chicken's life over a chicken sandwich. Right. You know what I mean? Where we can eat something else. Right, you don't need to eat chicken. People, no. you, people did things before, you know, ate things before they ate chicken. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course we've got all these, a wide range of foods we can eat. It's not like we need to do this to survive, is what yeah. I'm saying. So we're doing it for some other reason. And I don't think that reason justifies what we do to animals. You know right. I mean? All sentient beings don't have to be equal in every way. Right. But there's, there's something about them all that matters morally and that's their experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you might get two human beings and one has a maybe a lesser experience because of something that happened to them and their, their brain didn't develop. Or, you know, they might have a, a child, might not have as deeper experience as you do because you're an adult and you can really think deeply about the universe and the world right now mm. but as a four-year-old you probably couldn't yeah but it doesn't mean you deserve different rights no of course not that four-year-old deserves a right not to be treated as an object treated as property enslaved and killed for a sandwich you know what i mean yeah. so the same way like think of chickens yeah chickens are like pigs and they're, they're like the mentality of say a three or four-year-old you know yeah absolutely yeah so you agree with the sign you can't debunk it so you would agree then that when you're not vegan, you're doing something that you're morally against, maybe? Um, 
I would say, like, uh, personally where I am now, it's more like apathy, uh, and I am trying to, like, eat less meat, and uh, so I've, I've started cutting meat out of my dinners, uh, I'm going to start, you know, just a few days a week, um, yes. you know, I don't, I don't know how militant I'll get with it, you know, but, you know, if How it, stringent do you mean, like, how strict? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's, let's, let's analyse that then, so yeah. this is good, so now we're going to get somewhere here. So, you believe in re this reduction sort of thing, yeah? Yeah. So, and that, that would be like a good middle ground for you. You're not going to go completely vegan, but right now you think just pulling things out here and there. Yeah, and then eventually, you know, you get to the point where you don't have yep. any meat products at, or yep. animal products at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th I, I think that would probably work for me because... Yeah. Um, so, you're talking about reducing to the point of veganism? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I agree with... Uh, did you ever see Carnage by, uh, I think, Stephen Amstel? Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote an essay on that a few uh, a few months ago. You wrote an essay on I Carnage. Wrote, yeah, I wrote an essay on Carnage for uh, my uni course. So if anyone doesn't know what Carnage is, it's where everyone's looking back from a future point of view. Fifty years in the future, view. and you know they use that as kind of a narrative format to you know look on twentieth, twenty first century people eating meat. Yeah. And, uh, and everyone's like living with regret, and they've got like generational trauma because of it and they're like yeah. oh what do we do why did we do this yeah and it's also it's funny yeah. you know and it's it's very entertaining but the actual message of what the uh, what he tried to say i think one of one of the poignant lines in the film is his like surrogate character saying oh i guess i would feel upset if anyone was put in a bap like you know yeah. It, it just kind of makes sense when it's put in that format. So that's what that's why I get what you're saying, and I get and I uh, agree with you. I just you know I've had animal products in my life. You know my parents just never really thought much about it. So I thought yeah, uh, I'll start cutting down and eating less, and you know. See yeah. where that sort of lands you. Yeah, exactly. But that guy who was just here a second ago who said four months and uh, he couldn't be happier. I'm vegan. You are. Four months and one of my biggest regrets in life is not going to. I know. Like, that's really? like, you yeah. woke up, brother. Yeah, I just don't understand that people can watch it and not be vegan. I feel like that. That was a that was a very uh, bold, big statement. So. I guess it's because like he's finally living consistent with his values. Yeah. For a lot of vegans that I know. They, they wish they did it sooner because of the guilt associated with continuing. Because sooner or later, you're going to find some stuff out and it's going to make you really, really upset. I've been an activist for many years and I know some stuff that would keep you up at night. It's horrible. I've probably got some trauma from the things I've witnessed right. in the industries. That's what it is. Because you're going to find that stuff out and then you're going to go, I wish I went vegan sooner. Because of how disgusting it is, how horrible it is. Because right now you're looking at it through like maybe a philosophical viewpoint. You're yeah. Like, oh yeah, this is morally wrong in this. But when I show you like what goes on. Oh okay, so you a, it's a lot different. Like oh, I believe it's different. This is like some footage that we. Oh, uh, is this, this going to make me? Uh, is this going to make me not want to? Uh... Well, I mean, I don't know if you eat pigs. Yeah, I eat pigs. So they jack off boars and then they they stick the semen in the females. And then they become pregnant and they keep them in these farrow these are called farrowing crates. These are completely legal in the UK. They get sores from rubbing against these farrowing crates. It's incredibly horrible. They're in these prisons for about five to six weeks. The piglets that don't grow fast enough or that are a bit sick, they grab them by the hind legs and they smack their heads on the ground. It's called thumping. And this is very common. Go into any farrowing shed and this is what you'll see. Um, so here, these are piglets that have been thumped on the ground. And they clip their teeth out and they snip their towels off so they don't bite each other in confinement. But yeah, this is called a gas chamber. And uh, you might think this just happens around the world, not here, but this is the main way they kill pigs here. They go down this dungeon, they're terrified, of course, because they're in this cage. Right. They go down into CO2 gas. And the gas is like uh, what you find in your Pepsi or Coke, burns them. And they suffocate and burn their eyes and mouth. And they try to escape and they smash their head against the bars. and. One of the most horrible ways to die, I can't, couldn't imagine anything worse than being lowered down into a dungeon full of gas and try to escape in there. They're like little children in their minds, you know? Yeah. They scream, scream like terrified, terrified children. There's one in Manchester, you can hear them screaming all day. That's essentially pigs. Cows, it's the same. They stick their fists in the female's anus to hold the cervix to stick semen into them. When they have their calf, they, they steal their calves away and they're maternal animals. It's been studied actually, this trauma. Calf mother bond separation. Yeah. They're in their stomach for nine months. Imagine your mum getting you taken away from her. It's horrible to do that to a mammal. And this happens standard practice in the dairy industry. This is a calf slaughterhouse. So they can kill them for veal. 
Yeah, I, do, I, don't eat, I don't like veal. Yeah, but if you consume dairy, the veal industry only exists because of the dairy industry. Oh, okay. This is a mother that's had her calves taken away constantly just for her milk. She'll be turned into a burger. <coughs> I don't know how much more you want to watch of that, but... Uh, I, d I mean, I prefer not to watch any more uh, ever if that's, uh, if that's all right. Yeah. I think that was about two and a half minutes, three yeah. minutes. That's just a glimpse into what happens, you know? Yeah. How do you feel now about, like, your... I feel like I don't want to eat any more pigs, yeah. uh, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah. About the gas chamber and that? Yeah, the gas chamber, that was uh, very harrowing. Um, you can look up the data yourself as well. So you just say, yeah, are pigs gas chambered in the UK? It's all there, mate. Like, anything I say, just cross-check it as well. Yeah. Like, you might say, oh, this is just vegan propaganda. They want you to... That's why I invite anyone to go and check out the data themselves, check out the investigations themselves. Go into a factory farm yourself. You know what I mean? Chickens is the worst. Chickens, yeah, I've, uh, I've seen footage of chickens. Uh, Over 95% of them are factory farmed indoors. Frankenstein bodies, they're, they're only four weeks or something when they're killed, but they just grow from little chicks to really big in four weeks and they're still babies. You know, these are little infant little chicks. Yeah. People are eating, they're just overgrown. And that's what most people are eating. Okay. What would you say for anyone, just like the steps towards, uh, you know, going vegan uh, from, you know, a meat yeah. eating uh, perspective? Would you just say, oh, just cut it all out as easy, as fast as you can? See, for me, or right, th this wise. is my philosophy. And right. there are different people with different strategies, yeah. right? Because some people believe that just going vegetarian first is a good idea, take the meat out. Yeah. Then you've still got the dairy and eggs and then you take the dairy out, then the eggs out, or cheese out, then the milk out. For me, it's like, oh, mate, I, I've just made a decision. If I'm going to quit alcohol, I quit. It's all or nothing. Yeah, because if I'm lingering around in that alcohol's a drink, you know, then I'm going to keep... It's really hard to cut off. But if you stop looking at animals as food, and you start going, oh, I'm actually against that. I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to actually go vegan, right? That's a decision you've made. So, but what I say to people instead is I offer them Challenge 22. It's a vegan challenge okay. that will help guide you. So you do, you do it for 22 days. But then what happens is you learn about what to eat. You start educating yourself. You start watching some things about what happens to animals. And when you don't have dead bodies in your mouth and you're not looking at animals as food, you start to like see things differently, actually. You start to see the information differently. In, uh, in what way? If someone's eating meat, right, and I'm talking to them about animals, they're more likely to double down because they're defending what they're, they're currently doing. Oh, okay, I see. But if you take the, the animal products away, yeah. you don't have anything to defend anymore. So you have got to be more open to the information and you have got to see things a lot differently. It's a psychological phenomenon. And they've tested this actually. Yeah? Yeah, like giving people an animal message when they're eating like nuts compared to when they're eating the meat. Right. The, the, the people who are eating the nuts. People don't want to feel like guilty or they're, the bad guy. Feel, yeah. yeah, and you're yeah. trying to justify it, defend yeah. it, so you don't have to worry about it. Certainly when you're a little kid. I didn't do it, mum, like, you know, like, it's still in us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So most people will try to justify defend. You don't seem like, like that type of person. In what way? You didn't seem very defensive, actually. You seemed no. very open. You seemed like, oh, give us the information, I want to know. Yeah. Now, what's, what, how do I do this? You are an outlier, actually. You think? Yeah. Just, I've been an activist for a long time. Yeah. And you are an outlier. You are, you are very open, casual, not defensive, show us the information, that was bad, I don't want to eat pigs anymore. What do I do? Should I cut it out or should I? Usually it's plants feel pain, tomatoes are just as sentient as a pig. Vegans are this and that, a vegan was mean to me, or animals don't feel pain, or something like this. Right. More often than not, there's some justification or some rationale that people will use, and I'll sit there back and forth with them for an hour. You know, I've done a little bit of research, you know, I see carnage and stuff like that. I've You've kind had of seeds looked planted into before it. this moment. Yeah, um, I like animals, I'm big, I've always liked animals. Yeah. I might get some chickens now, actually. Yeah. I, might, I might just get a few chickens and a coop or something. Rescue them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. From a factory farm. Yeah. Another well. thing, like, animals are not objects, right? So they're not like, I'm going to go to this breeder here. Yeah. And they're, they're selling these chickens for money. Or their dog, like a dog breeder, right? Yeah. They've got this mother dog, they sell, they're selling off their animals. And then it's more like, oh, they're, I want to buy them for my own pleasure. Right. But when you, like a sanctuary will, like, rescue chickens from certain death. And then they offer them, like, a, like a home. It's different to, like, going out and buying a pet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a different situation. Okay. Kind of thing. So supporting a chicken breeder would mean, like in the egg industry, they take the females and they use them to lay eggs, and the males will go on a conveyor belt and they'll cull them in a big blender. Yeah. They just throw them in a blender fully conscious, or they gas them. 
So if you go to a, a chicken breeder, they probably got the hen from a parent breeder facility that, you know, cull the males off. So yeah. it's good to steer away from anyone selling animals. Okay. Yeah. What I would do, your first step is like a, do it like a little vegan challenge. I did a uh, vegetarian month once, uh, and that was that was all right. There was someone said something about B12, like the vitamin, uh, and they said, uh, yeah, you should probably take a supplement or something. Yeah, with B12, it can build up in you over time. You might be deficient in B12 right now, you don't know. That's fair. Because you haven't tested your blood. Right. So not everyone absorbs B12. To save confusion, it's good to get your bloods done before you make a big diet change. Okay. I didn't. The only reason I say this is because people go vegan, then they blame every single deficiency they have on veganism. And they never did blood work before that. Right. So you don't know whether you're iron deficient, whether you're B12 deficient, whether you've got high cholesterol now. And what people do is they go vegan, then they start getting their bloods tested and they're freaking out. And then they start going, oh, look at all this stuff that you had nothing to compare it to. Yeah. But B12 builds up in you over time. A lot of people have B12 stores that can last for up to like, I think it's like five, six, seven years or something. Really? Okay. But I always supplement B12. Okay. As a rule. Yeah. And if I'm not getting sun, vitamin D. Right, yeah. And that's so, for everyone. When it, when it comes to my health, I'm not as stringent as I am when it comes to like cutting animals' heads off for sandwiches. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because that's my personal choice, I think. Yeah. The only th reason I want people to take care of their health when they're vegan is because people use it as an excuse to go back to harming animals. Like they don't eat enough calories, for example. Right, yeah. They go from eating like sandwiches and steak and cheese to just some lettuce or something. And then they, they, I've got no energy, bro. Like, it's gotta be veganism. It's like, well, do you track any calories in that? Yeah. Why don't you eat bread and peanut butter and beans and pasta like you were before? See, I like to do stir fries. I like to just chop a bunch, like just whatever yeah. like veggies I've got, you know, uh, fry them up and then Noodles. have rice. Yeah. Tofu is the yeah. best. If you get tofu and you crisp it up, make yeah. it crispy and you flavour it with the hoisin or something, it's the best chicken replacement. We love it and it's full of calcium. Yeah. Super high in calcium tofu. Do you use chronometer? Uh, I don't know what that is, no. Like It's like uh, my fitness pal. Oh, okay, yeah. Chronometer does all of your nutrients spectrum. So you chuck tofu in there, protein, calcium, iron. It's amazing what you can get from plants. I would use chronometer so you've got an idea about what's in certain protein replacements. Yeah. Alright. I gotta go in one second. I just got one quick question. Uh, where do you stand on honey? Is that okay or not? So with honey, I boycott honey. Okay. It's a different justification. Like when we're eating our crops and insects uh, yeah. harmed in the crops, it's different to cultivating to bees, taking the honey from them and then gassing them. Okay. You know, and it's different to pollination with bees. Right. Because pollination with bees is like, not like the same as the honey industry. So I think like searing away from exploiting even insects is a good philosophy. And okay. that's why I, I, didn't, I didn't know the gas bees. I thought they just, you know, yeah, had, so they I thought them. they just used, uh, had bee farms and you know, honey farms. And yeah. uh, some people had a problem with that because it's animal exploitation. There's a few welfare things too. They snip off the queen bee's wings and leave oh, her in the man. hive. And there's things we can justify like crop deaths. Right. Get rid of the crops, what do we have? We're gonna yeah. die. It's justified. But I don't think honey is. Mm. You've got agave syrup, maple syrup, all these different syrups. We've got a hundred syrups to choose from. Why do we need honey? Well, you know what I mean? We can switch yeah. it out. It's not like, I don't think it's justified personally, so yeah. Okay. I just ask because uh, I really like honey. Uh, uh, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. You can get so. vegan honey. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Vegan right. honey. But uh, it was really good yeah. talking to you, bro. Yeah, yeah, you too. I Thank appreciate you. it a lot. I'll let you know how the challenge goes. Yeah, tell me how you're going. Yeah. And uh, if you got any questions, while you're doing it, look into some shit. Yeah, for sure. Watch some documentaries. I, I recommend watching Dominion if you can't stomach what happens to animals, but put it on in a background so you can listen to what happens to animals. Okay. It's just a good way to get information. All right, man. All right, brother. Good All talking right. to you, mate. Yeah, you Take see. care. All right. No I'm worries. Nice see you, bros. Cheers, guys.